What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about Crimson Clover on the Switch. This is like the day of my dreams that that game got ported to a modern day console. And we're gonna unbox Ikaruga on the Switch. Now these are a couple of games that I got in the mail the other day. Came home from work and they were both sitting there. It's Ikaruga and it's Xeno Crisis. Uh, both on the, no, yeah, both on the Switch. Both Switch games. Anyway, I already own Xeno Crisis digitally on the Switch, so I'll just kinda, I'm not going to do a full unboxing. I'll just show what the, the casing looks like, I guess. I mean, it's a strictly limited games game. And all their collector's editions are pretty much the same size. I have a couple of them on a shelf kind of sitting next to each other. And I have them for different systems. Like, I got a PS4 one. I got a couple of Switch ones. I got one for the Vita. And all their collector's editions are the same size. Now, if you should be, you should be able to get a retro protection and find a case for Strictly Limited Games. But I did not see that on Retro Protection's website. So, I was trying to look for dimensions of a case that was kind of the same size to fit all the strictly limited games, like boxes like this inside of case protectors, but I couldn't find any. So if any of you guys know of where to get some that are the size for these collector's editions, let me know. Then You know, I don't have a ton of them, but maybe I got what, five or six or something like that just for the shooters that they came out with. It would be kind of cool to have my stuff in safe packaging like that because, you know, these... These collector's editions, they always, uh, you know, are expensive to get, you know, if you don't get it upon release or pre-order it a year <laughs> before it comes out. But yeah, Xeno Crisis, I had a ROM of this. I downloaded through it on a Genesis Mini and, um, you know, then downloaded it for the Switch. You know, really, really awesome shooter. But uh, we'll get into that in another video. Now we're going to unbox Ikaruga. Now, for those of you that know me and have been on this channel for a little bit, you know that Ikaruga is not my favorite shooter nor is treasure are that nor are they my favorite program <laughs> for shooters i mean some of the games they've made they're good ikaruga is not a bad shooter by any means you know i played some um some dojin stuff that's uh, pretty bad on the pc that's you know just feels like a, a really sloppy tech demo with terrible controls and this is a, this is better than that you know but uh this is an extremely hard game i mean a lot of shooters are hard you know especially if you guys are you know, into them like me, you know, a lot of them are hard, you know, I don't claim to be good at them, but this one's especially hard for me. I was talking to a buddy of mine um, yesterday on the phone, and he was talking about how hard this game is. Um, and, you know, the mechanics of this game are pretty much just uh, switching polarity, that's what they call it in the game, right? Polarity, white and black, you know, white and black, that yin-yang, you know, riding that line, you know, when are you going to switch you know, back and forth? And apparently, you know, like the dark bullets are, you know, more effective on the white objects and vice versa, but they both work on each other, you know. I don't know the full depth of the mechanics for this game. Um, I wasn't one of the ones fortunate enough to, to own it on the Dreamcast. I do have a GameCube version, but... You know, from all the people I've talked to, the uh, you know the Dreamcast one is where it's at. But cool little sticker. Um, you know, whenever you encounter, I have a boss encounter. That there's like this red strip that goes across the middle of the screen, and it makes the screen change colors or whatever. Um, these little metal Earth figurines. Now, my son, would we go to Ocean City, you know, in the summer times. We didn't get this summer, obviously, because of the virus. But we go down there, and he used to buy a lot of these for different things and put them together. So. I might actually put that together with my stepson if he wants to do it. He might think it's stupid and not want to do it, so we'll see. But, um, you know, I, I'm not super impressed with this collector's edition and if for the fact that it says that there's, like, an awesome soundtrack, and it says it on the website. When you, when you pre-order this game, it talks about awesome, like, rock and soundtrack or whatever. I'll throw a screenshot on the screen, and there's no soundtrack in the game. Also, on the Switch version of this game, there's a mandatory download. I could not even get into the cart without downloading an update to this game. That is some bullshit. You know, what do I do like when the servers are down? I need to buy another Switch because my Switch that I've had the past 20 years fried. Need another Switch. Servers are down. Can't create an account. You know, and then you pop the card in and you need to do this download. Hopefully they have hacks and stuff in the future that you can get around stuff like that. But like, is the freaking game even on the damn cart? I don't know. All I know is a buddy of mine, this is just what I heard, we were talking yesterday, and he said that uh, for the PS4 version, there was no download. I mean, there may be a download, but he, there wasn't one required to actually get into the cart. Now, see that little sticker on the um, case right there? I saved that kind of shit. I cut it out with scissors and throw it inside the case, inside the manual there. And there, there is a manual. I'd rather there be no manual and then not have to have a download, mandatory download, than you know even have a manual 
I mean, that is cool that they have a manual, but man, that really pisses me off about that mandatory download. And I really wanted to talk about that. And I wanted you guys to know, if you buy this game for the Switch, there is like a mandatory download. And for games like this, you know, I don't care if it's freaking, you know, Fortnite, but for games like this, no, I want everything on the cart, man. There's no excuses. I mean, the damn game fits on a, on a, a Dreamcast, you know, a gigabit disc or whatever. There's no reason why that whole game can't be inside this cart, but... You know, and no soundtrack. But, you know, other than that, I mean, it's 60 bucks. But it's Ikaruga on the Nintendo Switch. The day has finally come, guys. We finally got a port of Crimson Clover to an actual video game console. I've been talking about this for years. I, I absolutely love this shooter. This is my favorite shoot 'em up of all time. This is it. And, I mean, I'm kind of in awe right now. It's actually on the Nintendo Switch. I couldn't really do a proper review of this game. You want to know why? Because it would be hard for me to look at this game objectively. I love it that much. I wouldn't be a fair person to actually review this game. But I will give you a, an overview and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So anyway, Crimson Clover, just a quick breakdown. The first uh, release of Crimson Clover, there was a few previous builds. But the first official release, I guess, would have been in 2011. Uh, that was the Dojin version. That's actually the version that I have uh, physically. And then, in, uh, on 2013, we had an arcade port. This was in Japan. I don't think this ever came over here. If there was any machines of Crimson Clover over here, that'd be awesome. But anyway, there was an arcade port in 2013. And then World Ignition hit Steam, which is a, a build of Crimson Clover. It's a really polished build of that game. But uh, that came out in 2014. That hit Steam. I didn't download the game at that point. But I want to say it was right around 2016 when I found out about Crimson Clover. And then we move on from 2014 to 2020, we got Crimson Clover World Explosion. So we have Crimson Clover, Crimson Clover World Ignition, and then Crimson Clover World Explosion. And this is all done by, I'm, I'm assuming he might have had some help with the developer, Yatsubane. Now, Yatsubane, I'm not super familiar with this developer. All I know is Crimson Clover, but supposedly Yatsubane started working on another project. I don't know what it was called. There was supposed to be uh, some kind of demo available. I never got it. I just heard or read things about it during blog posts. And apparently this guy, it's like a one-man band, assuming it's a man, but it's like a one-man band uh, that programmed this game. I don't know if the same person did the soundtrack. I have no idea, but apparently, and this is just some like some folklore on the internet, this is, yeah, yeah it's a one-man band. But... Anyway, just to give you a little quick rundown of the game, this plays a lot like a cave game, specifically Don Pachi and Do Don Pachi. Don Pachi, Do Don, Don Pachi, Don Pachi. You know what I'm talking about. The graphics look a little bit similar. Uh, the break mode and double break mode are the mechanic are just like uh, uh, hyper system mode. Yeah, hyper system mode and Do Don Pachi. Um, there are, like I said, there's some differences. There's the Dojin build, World Ignition, and then World Explosion. So the break mode and double break mode, when you go into those modes, uh, there's text that flies across the screen. Break mode and double break mode are going to look different in a world ignition and world explosion than they do look in the original Dojin build. That's just a, uh, something to point out. Now, in the original Dojin build, at least the version I have, which I do believe is version 1.1, there was something called the limiter shop, which was when you played the game and you died, whatever, you built up uh, in-game currency, and then in the options menu, you can buy things like continues, I think maybe extra lives, power-ups, um, you know, things like that. They've done away with that in World Ignition and World Explosion, but I will say this, normally I'm against mechanics like that, but that limiter shop did give the game a lot more replay value than let's just say the game mechanics in uh, Jamestown or Skyforce, um, and I, I like them better. I like the limiter shop better. Um, if you want to know what the limiter shop is, you can actually download the Dojin build. Of, I think it's version 1.1 of Crimson Clover. If you go on uh, Dojin Gravity and go to the shooter section, you can actually download it. That's where I actually first got my version of Crimson Clover. And if you want to know any more about that, you know, hit me up on social media. I'd be happy to direct you uh, to the download links. Now... The Switch port of this game has different features, including stats, a gallery. Uh, this does support screen rotation, so you have your vertical mode if you have a vertical screen with the uh, Tate mode. And it looks awesome. And it looks awesome on the Nintendo Switch in hand, in vertical and handheld mode. Now, the thing with the vertical and handheld mode, I ordered a flip grip. And that's fine and good, but that D-pad, though, I got a Hori left Joy-Con. But the Hori left Joy-Con doesn't have a battery built in, so how would the flip grip even work? 
and Nintendo never made an official D-pad left Joy-Con. So, I mean, what the hell do I even do? I, I mean, I've seen the modded ones on eBay. They're like, what, like a hundred bucks for the left Joy-Con? I'll, I'll pay that hundred bucks for that left Joy-Con if that thing is shoring off the truth, but I've heard that some of those modded Joy-Cons are not all that. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so in the version uh, on the Switch, you know, the World Explosion, you can, the, the music, it comes, it's different music. And I, I noticed it immediately, and I was like, oh my God, the music's different. And I'm not even going to say it was in a good way, but I went into the options, and you can switch it from unlimited to original. And that's what you want. You want the original soundtrack. Maybe if you've never played the game, you're probably not going to notice the difference. But someone like myself that's played the PC version a lot, you know, I, I want that original soundtrack. And I really like the soundtrack to this game. And hopefully they'll do a physical version of this game and actually and give us a soundtrack. Um, there are soundtracks available online. It's real limited. Just like it's hard to find just like the physical copies. And they're, you know, like a hundred bucks if you can find one. But there's a soundtrack. There's three difficulties just like in the PC builds. There's novice, arcade, and arrange. As well as four gameplay modes including uh, boost mode, original mode, time attack, and unlimited mode. Which all kind of switch up the difficulty. Um, you know, this game, when you look at it. There's a lot of colors that flash, and it, it feels like one of those games that you should have a warning, like, you know, this game could cause seizures, right? And what you're actually seeing on the screen right now is one of the, the boss fights, and that's actually my favorite boss. Um, there's another boss on here. I like to call him the Texas Titty. You know, why I call him the Texas Titty, I have no idea. It, if a titty was from Texas, I guess that's what it would look like. <laughs> I don't know. It's the best way to describe it, but... The bosses, the boss fights in Crimson Clover are great. They're brilliant. This is a hard game. Um, it, it's just, it, it's really going to remind you of a cave shooter if you've played a lot of cave shooters. And I, I can't say enough good things about this game. And like I said earlier, you know, I've been praying and pushing for this game to get ported to consoles for the past couple of years. I've turned a lot of people onto this game. You know, I've had people hit me up on YouTube and social media, you know, thanking me. For turning them onto this game because I was blown away when somebody turned me onto this game. You know, I, I loved it and it really, like I said, it's my favorite shooter. But uh, you know, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's twenty bucks on the Nintendo eShop at what nineteen ninety nine. Um, you know, twenty bucks. Hopefully, we get a physical version of this game. But ah, God, I don't know. I mean, I've seen them do physicals on stuff a lot crappier than this, so. Uh, I don't know, and hopefully that Yatsubane dude, hopefully he moves forward and makes another shooter because this one is one of the best. And just imagine if one person put this thing together. You know, I'm sure other people went along behind him and polished it up, but man, like if he's going to do something this good on his first shooter, imagine if he made a couple of more, you know, kind of like uh, the Altenex games that kind of, I don't know, I'm not going to say they got better as the games progressed, but I just want to see this dude put forth the effort to make another shooter and like i said there are talks about it online but i've just never seen anything in it at this point it could be an urban myth but 20 bucks nintendo eShop. you know if you're not a big shooter fan i'm gonna say then you're probably not gonna like it but if you like shoot 'em ups in the least you know just a, a little inkling you know just a little bit spend the freaking twenty dollars it is so worth it you will absolutely love this shooter if you have any interest in it it's an inkling like i said anyways guys oh and right there look, look that's what i'm talking about the texas titty that i was talking about that's him he's on the that's the boss fight on the screen right now I'll let you guys before i end the video i'll let you you know get a little bit of a look at the texas titty but see those uh those beams kind of spraying out right there those beams start to rotate and then you have to rotate around the screen and still avoid all the enemy fire as you're rotating around the screen around those beams and it is really 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 difficult and as a matter of fact i'll go ahead and say this the arcade version of this on the switch of world explosion is a little bit harder in my opinion than world ignition they could be exactly the same i have no idea i just want to say that i noticed that i noticed a small difficulty spike uh, in the nintendo switch version maybe i'm just crazy and you know, some of you guys that are expert to this game might be able to point out um, some stuff to me about it but that's just something that I feel like I noticed, but anyways, again, can't recommend it enough, and until next time, guys, peace out.